what is up YouTube, Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you guys the next video in my Veteran Dungeon Guide series, and today we are going to be covering the Vaults of Madness. So, unfortunately, this dungeon has made me very, very mad in the past, trying to farm up one of the gear sets in here. We have a couple really good gear sets from this dungeon, also some not-so-good ones, but I've run this dungeon quite a lot farming up gear sets, so... I know way too much about this place, but we're going to be going over the Vaults of Madness today, guys. Overall, a pretty easy dungeon. Not overly complicated or difficult, so... But we still, you know, going to be covering the mechanics for you guys today and making sure that you know exactly what we need to do. So, our... First thing that we're going to cover is the gear sets from this dungeon. And the first one we have is Grothdar. So Grothdar is the monster set. And the uh, one piece gives you a line of max magicka. And the two pieces that when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to create lava pools that swirl around you, dealing flame damage to all enemies within 8 meters of you every second for 5 seconds. And this can occur once every 10 seconds. We also have the best in slot set of literally anything in the game, Oblivion's Edge. Hence, you know, please sense all the sarcasm in my voice. Who We have... A a line of weapon critical, two lines of uh, weapon damage, stam recovery, and part of that five piece is that when you kill an enemy, you fill an empty soul gem and heal for health. Literally just the most meta gear set ever. We also have a rattle cage, which gives you a line of health, uh, two lines of spell damage, and the five piece gives spell damage and major sorcery at all times, increasing your spell damage by 20%, and that is our heavy armor gear set. And then finally, we have our light armor set, Worm's Raiment, which gives a line of spell damage, a line of maximum magicka, a line of magicka recovery, and it reduces the cost of your magicka abilities by 4% for you and your group. So we're going to be approaching our first boss here, and it is the Cursed One. You always see in pug groups at least one person dies on this boss. Overall, the fight is extremely straightforward. You have some adds, and you have the boss kill the adds first, and then focus on the boss. He's got, like, a frozen attack where he basically puts, like, a frozen tornado on the ground that will basically uh, CC you in place and will stun you. Uh, eventually, but as you can see, he does that beam attack where our healer got beamed and he eventually died. Basically, what that attack does is it takes the damage that the boss is taking and basically duplicates that onto a target. So, that, that, that damage is reflected directly onto your target, so that is why Wiggly died, because me and our the DPS did not start stop DPSing, so he died. So, if, when that beam comes out, stop all DPS and your party member will live. But yeah, Tornado, that will basically just kind of slow you and root you in place, and that beam, and that's all you have to worry about. We then immediately have our next boss, Ugunna Soul Reaver. So basically, she'll rev uh, levitate a player at random, as you can see here, and I'll be disabled for, you know, 5, 10 seconds. I think it's more towards 10. And... You can't CC break that or anything. You just kind of stick there and don't do anything. She also has a fire wave that you saw when I was in the air that will deal damage to you. So just have the boss be faced away so that it doesn't hit your party members. And then she will conjure up healing orbs that if those reach her, she will be healed. So just simply kill those to prevent her from receiving that healing. But... Otherwise, not too much more to that boss. Just t keep her face away from the group, kill all of the orbs, and if you're levitated, you just kind of get to take a little break and sit there and chill out. Now, when we head down this little bridge here, we have a couple of ads at the mouth of the bridge. Not really anything crazy to worry about. There isn't anything major from the ad packs in this dungeons, honestly. The the ad packs here are relatively straightforward. Uh, the old Grims are probably the most difficult ad that you're going to have to deal with. And even then, as you can see, they're not that difficult. They have like an AoE slam that deals some minor damage that you don't really have to overly worry about. But once we finish taking down this final ad, we are going to continue down the corridor. I'll also show you guys what you have to do for the quest. I do, we do complete the quest for this dungeon. This unfortunately involves a lot of talking and going into other rooms, and it's a very slow quest. Uh, so that's a super unfortunate thing. But if you hug the wall here, you'll pretty much be able to ignore that ad pack that you saw over to the right, and then just have to deal with these guys up here. So again, you have some, you know, Flame Atronox, you have some other caster adds and some Banekin, so I just go for the Flame Atronox first, prevent, you know, all of that AoE damage from being on our team, and then otherwise you just take down the adds one by one, you know, nothing super, super crazy here, just your normal ad pack fights, you know, you have Archer adds that are going to do Conals, uh, you're going to see like, you know, from that first fight, you're going to occasionally see from certain adds those little ice tornadoes on the ground, nothing crazy. 
Uh, we also have a pack of Banekins at the bottom that will do some couple of charge electroshock attacks. Really nothing too much to worry about. You can just simply group them up in a really, really tight, tight group. And they're relatively squishy, so really good AoE will kill them fairly quickly. Then when you continue down here, you're going to have your next quest objective down here. And you're also going to have your next boss. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is pull all of the ads from both sides of the room and try to pull them out. Uh, one of the ads will drop a standard, so do keep that in mind. You don't want, you know, obviously want to stand in that, so just try to stand away from that and kill that ad. And then you're going to have our next boss slowly saunter down into the area here, and that is Death's Head. So Death's Head has a charge attack that he does where he basically just runs really fast in a straight line, as you can see right here, and will knock you down and deal damage. He also has a frontal cone slam attack that you do want to uh, watch out for that you can see right there. So tank, keep that boss face away from the group. You'll have poison runes, as you can see to my right, that will spawn around the room. Just don't stand in those AoEs. And he'll also summon skeletons from time to time that will uh, just explode whenever they die. But that's pretty much it. Overall, not a very difficult fight. Uh, you know, as you can see, some of these ads, uh, these archer ads, do not really get pulled whenever you are um, attacking the boss. So they can be really, really annoying to deal with. So we just take take down the last couple ads, and then once these guys are done, uh, we talk to the quest objective, and we're uh, moving on to the next part. I think we actually have to sit here and wait for it, if I remember correctly. Yes, you have to sit here and wait for this full conversation to go through, unfortunately. You cannot just skip this and walk past it. You got to wait for the full thing. So, just chilling, waiting for these guys to finish talking. And we're going to be able to move on to the next part. We only have a couple more bosses left, actually. Oh my god, actually, I'm just kidding. I'm scrolling through, and we actually have way more bosses left. This dungeon is surprisingly long. So, we pull we pull some uh, ads from the next room, just so we have something to do while we're waiting for these two, these two guys to finish talking. So, our tank goes and pulls some of the other ads in, just to give us something to do. So, once we kill them, we can see that this guy's finally ready to talk to us. We blast through the quest dialogue, and we move on toward the next part. So thankfully we won't have as many ads to deal with in this corridor because we pulled them in and killed them while we were waiting for that quest dialogue to finish. So we walk on through. And as you can see, just walking down, making our way downtown, walking fast. <laughs> just trying to fill the time, my man. So once you come down here, there's going to be a couple of ad packs at the bottoms. I know some people in the past have been like, oh, you can skip this, but we're just going to go through and do it. So when you come down to the bottom here, there's some ads around these various platforms. There's nothing, you know, it's just basically the same type of ads we've been seeing from the, from the entire dungeon so far. You have some Necromancer ads. Uh, you have some Nightblades that will do Soul Tether mechanics. Uh, you have Brutes that will do some, uh, you know, heavy attacks and whatnot. So again, just, just keep your eye out for that stuff. It's just a pretty simple with these ad packs. Is don't stand in the stupid. Don't stand in the red. And you'll pretty much be good to go. So we just kind of go from pack to pack here along this platform and kill them to to get ready to move on to the next part. And there's going to be um, one more platform of ads like this, except for the ads on the next platform are grouped up way nicer, so they're much easier to kill quickly. And then we're going to have our next boss, the monster for the uh, that is the monster helm, and that is going to be Grothdar. But as you can see, the ad pack down here is grouped nice and well, and I have my ultimate ready to go. So we're going to just drop it on these guys, I have to imagine. Just take them down super, super fast, that major vulnerability, making quick work of these ads. So once we take these guys down, we're able to move on to our next boss, and that is, like I said, going to be Grothdar. And Grothdar is a very easy boss. Very easy boss. He will summon lava at his feet that will follow players at random. Simply don't stand in it and you'll be fine. And he'll do an overhead slam attack that will knock you down. So if you are the target of that attack, as you can see right there, it's a conal. Please be sure to block or get out of the way. And otherwise, that is literally the entirety of Grothar's fight. Just avoid the lava. Don't get hit by the frontal cone slam. And you'll be good to go. Not much, not much more to say. Like I said, the, the mechanics for this dungeon are fairly straightforward. You know, we still have this guide here today for those of you who, who might be going into this dungeon the first time and want to learn about it. Um, 
you know, just maybe have a little bit of anxiety about t taking on the dungeon for the first time and want to make sure you're well equipped. But that's why we have these guides here for you guys today. So again, we have to listen to some more boring quest dialogue and listen to these guys just talking it out. Obviously, you know, if you're super into to quests uh, for these dungeons, then this quest is going to be a good one. Objectively, the dungeon is really it's a it's a fun dungeon. The mo the mobs are really really cool. It's just really cool aesthetically, and. If you guys like dungeon quests, then this dungeon is going to be a favorite of yours because the quest is very long. It has a lot of dialogue. Someone like me just trying to blast through it tends to be a little bit more annoying, but, you know, depends on your perspective. So once we are done talking to those guys, we continue to move down this hallway, and we have some ads at the end here. We go on and just attack that one guy, not a, not much. And then we have some feral shrivens that will start to come down the staircase. But if you run up and get them early, you can keep them relatively tightly grouped. And you can see that's why we're able to kill them so quickly. Once that ad pack is down, we're going to continue up the staircase here. And again, you have some more feral shrivens. Not, you know, nothing much, again, crazy to worry about. The shriven ads are relatively squishy, easy to take down. And we just kill them and with no problem. Now we continue to our next open area. We're actually going to have our next fight. And I literally have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name. Archerizer, maybe? We're going to go with that. So Archerizer, Archer, Archer Reason, whatever, has some Dramora ads around them. Simply kill those ads and you won't have any uh, much of an issue. He has a cone of fire breath that you just need to not stand in, and he'll summon patches of blue fire on the ground that you need to not stand in. But as you can see, he is a very squishy boss, so you are able to just cruise through him, and there really isn't a lot to worry about. It's actually an incredibly easy fight. So once we kill the remainder of these ads here, we're finally done. We are going to continue down the hallway. Dots Gaming, what are we doing here? There we go. We're continuing, continuing down the hallway here. Again, very, very easy boss fight. Not a lot to worry about. Let me scroll down to the next one. And then we're going to continue down, and we're going to actually enter in a pretty open area once we move past these ads. So as you can see, there was that huge AoE that went on the ground that placed a rune. Just don't stand in that, or you can get snared, hit with some damage. Uh, but these ads group themselves up pretty nicely, so they're really, really easy to take down. One of the good things about having this hallway here is that a lot of the ad groupings are super easy, so you're able to move through them very, very quickly. So once you get to this platform here, you do need to just jump off the edge. So you just jump off the edge and into the water here. And you will be able to move towards this staircase up to the right. So you have a, p a pack of, you know, Dremoras, some Shrivens at the bottom here. So simply bring them all into this middle platform here. And you can kill them all fairly quickly. Not really much to worry about. Then once these guys are done, there's some more that come over from the side when you aggro them. So just, you know, be aware that there's going to be some leftover ads chasing you around. So once we take care of those couple, we're going to move towards the staircase here. And again, we have some more Pharaoh Shrivens that will be coming down the staircase. Again, if you catch them early enough, they'll be super, super grouped up. So you're able to kill them fairly quickly. You also have a Flesh Atronach that's summoned. As you can see, we're able to take care of it really, really easily. I believe if you kill the caster, Flesh Atronach will go down. I don't think it's part of the ad pack. I'm pretty sure it's summoned. But then once you take on that ad pack, another one will summon behind you. So just be aware that you're going to need to go back down and take care of these guys really, really quickly. Again, pretty much the same mechanics though from the ones that you saw on the stairs. You know, just a lot of little conal AoEs, some some runes that get spawned on the ground. As long as you don't stand in that stuff, all of these ad packs will be really, really easy for you guys to tackle. Like I've said in the past, the ad packs in, from a lot of these dungeons don't actually require much brain power until you get to the DLCs. So going to our next boss, we have the Ancient One not again not a lot of mechanics from this guy some standard you know he's a considered a watcher ad and he's got some really standard mechanics he's got a high damage aoe when he uh, is at low hp so just don't stand in that and then otherwise he's got you know a beam that he shoots along the ground don't stand in that and and that's pretty much it that's all you have to worry about from this guy he's a really really simple straightforward boss so tank just be sure to keep him faced away so that, you know, the, the group isn't subjected to, to a lot of his AoE attacks. And, and that's it, man. That's it. Ancient one. Over and done with. Very, very easy fight. So we have... 
two more bosses left. Not very many left. The the final boss in this in this dungeon is actually one of my favorites. Uh, the spell effects are really really cool. I wish the fight was a little tougher, uh, because the effects are so cool. But objectively, it's a very very cool looking boss. <laughs> Excuse me. So once you take care of that pack of ads, you're going to come up this staircase here, and we have already another boss, and that is Iskra the Omen. So as you can see, Iskra the Omen flies down descends upon this area here and once you start attacking him he has some aoe attacks that you're just going to want to make sure that you stand out of as you can see he jumps up in the air and slams down you want to make sure that you're out of that if you get hit by that you'll take damage and be cc'd and he also will do that that line of fire along the ground simply do not stand in that and that's uh yeah pretty much it as you can see he jumps up does the aoe slam again He'll then jump to a random area doing another AoE slam. As you can see, I got hit by that and got knocked down. Line of fire. So, again, don't stand in the jumps where he jumps straight up or jumps around the room. And then don't stand in the line of fires. And that's pretty much all that this boss has to offer us. So, we are already almost done with this dungeon. We are approaching our final boss fight. So, it, it definitely check around this room, though. There's always a bunch of chests around this room. Um, same thing if you're back by um, Archerizer, or however the heck you pronounce his name. If you go into the rooms that are that are kind of off of his, like, chamber, you could also find some chests in there. So if you're in here trying to farm jewelry or trying to farm weapons, checking out those chests is going to be really, really important so that you can up and increase the amount of opportunities you have to get the items that you want to drop. So now you have to skydive down from that platform into the water here below. And then just simply swim to shore and head into the door up there and go into that hallway. Like I said, from, from this point on, we only have a uh, couple couple of ad packs. And then we have our final boss. Really, really not, not super difficult. The final boss is also very, very straightforward. Just some simple AoEs that you have to stand in one at one point. Stand, don't stand in one at another. Uh, really not too much to worry about. So we have some more feral strivens when we get inside of this, uh, get inside of this hallway here. So just simply take, take them out. Then we have a watcher up here, as you can see, literally the same mechanics as the ancient one boss, actually. Not really anything crazy. We've already gone over the watcher's mechanics, but I would definitely recommend focusing the watcher first before you take down the feral shriven ads at the top of the stairs. Because, you know, he can deal some pretty good damage to your party. So it's going to be easy to just take him down first. Then, like I said, if you go up those staircases really quickly, you'll be able to keep those Feral Shriven grouped up nice and tight so that you're able to take them down very, very quickly. Now, to get to our final boss here, uh, we just have to simply cross these broken, this broken pathway here. So you got a little bit of a little bit of jumping to do. And when you jump across, we're going to be reaching our final boss, and that is the Mad Architect. So for the Mad Architect, he's going to summon some uh, some Undaunted minions. We also are going to activate hard mode here, to increasing his damage and health. He's going to summon some undead guys around him whenever this adds, just simply kill them. He also is going to do a ground-based AoE that will snare and deal damage. You do not stand in that. He will also have a uh, high damage single target attack, so if you are targeted by that, be aware. And finally, he's got two different AoEs. One where you want to stand underneath a bubble, and one where you want to stand outside of his AoE. So if he breaks, starts to break these windows around him, you're going to want to stand inside of the bubble he summons. If he starts to summon ghosts from underneath him, you're going to want to stand outside of it. But besides that, as you can see, as long as you stay behind him, a lot of the AoEs will be focused onto the tank. So you really don't have a lot to worry about. But we just continue to DPS him, and I want to get him to a point where he's going to show some of those AoE mechanics. So as you can see, he does that little, that little gust from underneath him, and that means he's going to start the broken window mechanic. So you see, we get underneath the bubble, he breaks the windows, and if you're outside of this bubble, you will basically get completely wrecked. So once he assembles, reassembles the windows, you're good to go. You're safe to move outside of that AoE again. So we continue to put some more DPS pressure on him. We see some ads start to get summoned, but, you know, the boss is already so low on health. We just continue to go on him and kill him. Uh, if your DPS is slower, I would recommend dealing with the ads, but otherwise you can just kill the boss. Now, one mechanic, like I said, that didn't come up is that you will see he starts to have this huge ground AoE around him where he's going to summon a lot of ghosts that start to ascend from the floor. Just don't stand in that AoE. 
wait it out and you'll be fine but that's it guys the vaults of madness i know i kind of did a lot of filler talking for this dungeon but there really isn't a lot of mechanics to worry about here but if this was a dungeon that you did want some help on i really hope that this video did help so if you guys like this dungeon walkthrough please slap a like on it any questions leave a comment below and of course for more great elder scrolls online content please hit that sub button as well as the bell to keep notifications on so thank you all so much for stopping by today i very much appreciate it as always i'm dots gaming and i'll see you all in the next video